What's going on guys? So we have two projects kicking off today, or at least one of them is kind of a continuation. You're about to hear the uh, the F-350 start up here in a second. My father's going to bring that in so he can reinstall the fuel tank back into it. He took it out, plastic welded it, got it all prepped so it's ready to go back in the truck. So we're going to see how difficult that is. We're going to do a lot of this stuff off camera and then we'll just give you an update on when it's all done. And then as far as my new 8x10 foot caravan trailer goes, we're going to be putting this Seal Once Nano Poly Premium Wood Sealer. We got it in black. So this should be really, really cool. I have some cardboard underneath it. It's actually wet outside, but we're gonna we're gonna get this thing coated today and see what it looks like. I'm really excited because this is gonna kind of kick off the first big upgrade to the trailer, and it's relatively low cost. I paid 60 bucks for this stuff right here on Amazon, and it's supposed to work pretty good. It has a lot of really good reviews, and I didn't want to paint it. I thought about doing like a rhino lining type material over it, but instead I figured, you know what, let me just do a black stain. I think that'll look really good to kind of see the wood grain through it, especially if it's black and it's going to be protecting it at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and get this applied. I'll just give you kind of a, a summary of once we're done, what it looks like and, and how it how it went on. But you know, this shouldn't be too much of an issue. I've stained things before, and hopefully uh, we don't get too much runoff and drippage. We have these big pieces of cardboard that my dad actually had from a mattress that was delivered. So this should be fun. Dad's in the process of pulling the truck in. Asphalt reclaim is working really, really good to give us a nice slope. Anyways, we're going to get to it. Okay, so the original plan with the 73 Ford was to put the fuel tank back in, but we pivoted and decided to do a different one right now, and that was to install a internal hood release that this truck did not have. Now, Dad, did you get this specifically for this truck, or did it come off of a, like a Bronco or something else? Well, I got it off eBay, and it will fit everything from 73 to 79 F series and a 78 or 79 Bronco. Okay. It really wasn't that difficult. We had to find a grommet and I'm almost starting to think the grommet hole we found, which is right there, had a plug on it, but it didn't have anything going through the plug or around the plug. And once we removed it, it was almost a one inch diameter hole. Let me see. This is the plug that they had. I don't think that is OEM. That looks like it's designed for a pipe. You basically tighten this and it compresses this piece into a pipe and seals it off. But yeah, this is what was there. Wasn't needed at all. Uh, and that's probably what it was for, I'm assuming, is maybe prep for the factory hood release because it routes it to all the right areas in, inside. If we would have moved it to where another plug is right there, we wouldn't have actually, actually, I think it's under there. Yeah, right there. We wouldn't have had enough slack and it would have been in a really awkward place. But now it's working beautifully. He purchased this whole part right here. This is all aftermarket. So it did not have this hood release right here, this piece right here, and this plate that's in front. The piece that was removed is this piece right here, which is the manual hood release. So you basically pull the handle there and it opens up the latch. But it seemed to go on really well. Actually, he put this on so quick, I didn't even realize he was installing this while I was tapping that screw on the side there to hold. There's tapping the sidewall here so I could route that through there. But fit perfect. It looks really good. The grommet looks really good. I put a little zip tie on the other end of it, which I'll trim off, and that's just to keep the piece from falling back in. We had to open that hole up a little bit with the step bit, but now let's demonstrate. So you want to slam your hood? So it is closed, not moving. Now he's going to pull it over there, and now the release is right here, which I don't know if I can do it with one hand, but yeah, basically you're going to push down a little bit, pop the release. I think I got it. So you can probably just lift up on the hood now. There we go. Check that out. That is super cool. That's an awesome fix. Yeah, let me show you something. Clever the way they did it. So the way the release works from inside is you actually have to have the key inside of here to release it. And you can't pull the key out if it's in that open position. So this is if you want to essentially lock it. So there's no way to release the hood from inside the vehicle without the key. You put the key in, you turn it, the key is now locked inside, and now you can pull that to release the, the hood release. That is really cool. And he had that key matched with the glove box and maybe the door as well, or is that a different key? No, the door uses the ignition key. Yeah, okay. So the door and the ignition are the same key. And now this latch for the hood and the glove box are the same key. 
That's very, very creative. You don't even see that in modern vehicles. Once you break into a modern vehicle, you can pretty much pop the hood. Very cool. Okay, so the first of the upgrades are done to the trailer. We have a beautiful black stained deck on this thing. Love it. I was able to get down about a half an inch into these the sides of the wood paneling right here. Otherwise, I would have had to take the whole trailer apart to get to these panels, which wasn't something I wanted to do. But what do you guys think? I think it looks absolutely beautiful. It really, really makes the trailer look different, especially from the, the previous, you know, kind of normal pressure-treated lumber look to it. I also added this really cool handle right here. I picked up two of them on Amazon for like $9. They're actually replacement handles for toy hauler doors. So the big ramp on the back, these are what you replace them with if you break yours. They're made out of a really strong ABS plastic. I drilled in and then I put two bolts right into the frame right here. It's not moving at all. And you know, the tongue weight when empty on this thing is pretty dang light. Whenever it's full, which is not the scenario you'd want to remove this, you're not going to be able to lift it up by that handle. And you'd probably wear through that handle pretty quickly if you did that. But as it sits right now, you're probably talking, I'm going to guesstimate around 30, maybe 40 pounds worth of lifting weight to lift that up. So it's not bad at all. We have a lot of additional upgrades that are going to be taking place to it. Again, very functional upgrades. So far, we're in $75 right? $65 for the, the stain on it, $10 for the handle, and I got technically a second replacement handle. But if I'm going to actually factor it for the price of just one handle, I'm at $70 worth of upgrades to this trailer. We're probably going to put in, I'm going to say, probably around $200 more worth of upgrades. So not a heck of a lot more. Honestly, uh, whenever we add all the upgrades to it, maybe a little bit more than that once I figure out what I'm going to do with the wheels. If I decide to go with the aluminum wheels, which I probably will, but we'll probably be about $350 total on upgrades, and that's going to include lighting, um, a really cool front jack assembly, new coupler, um, possibly new wheels. Again, that's something that I've been talking about and a toolbox. So I'm going to be putting a toolbox up front here. Definitely have plenty of front frame section here to add it to, and it's only going to take up about 12 inches, so only about a foot up here. I'll have plenty of room here in the center part to mount my jack whenever it arrives. What do you guys think? I love the way that looks, but I definitely want your opinion. Do you like that, or do you like the look of just solid pressure-treated lumber? Anyways, please leave a comment below. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. If you haven't had a chance, now's a great time to subscribe to the channel. If you plan on getting a small trailer like this and you want to see some really inexpensive and functional upgrades you can do to it. Guys, we'll talk to you again very soon.